Database indexes make queries faster. So one important consideration you can make when you design a system is how the data it uses is going to be indexed. A database index is a table that stores the column values of some column from the records of the database in an ordered way. And for each record, it stores a pointer to the whole record in the database. So a database index is comprised from three pieces. First, it's a table and like any table of a database, it's persisted on disk, but that's an implementation detail. In-memory databases like Redis store their index in memory as well. While it's a regular table, the database index will store a column from the database's table itself, which is called the index column. But the key difference is that in the index, we will be ordering the values of that column. The third piece is the other column of the index, which stores a pointer to the record that is associated with the value in the column index. So a database index is a pure redundancy. We are storing the same data again in an ordered fashion. The reason we do this relates to how data is looked up in a database when we want to fetch an item from it. Data in a database is stored in blocks that have the same configurable size. So each block stores a number of records depending on its size and the size of each record in the database. When we want to retrieve an item from the database, the blocks of the database will be accessed one by one until the record is found. This means that on average, querying for some record will require n over two disk reads. If we have 1 million records and each block contains five records, we will need to read the disk 100,000 times on average to load the block that contains a record into the main memory. Assuming that we have a solid state drive with a read time of 50 microseconds, it will take about five seconds to complete the query. When we don't index data, the time it takes to read records from the database is in the order of a full table scan. But now, let's see what happens when we do use an index. Now, when we make a query, we first check the index, and since the data is ordered, instead of searching one by one, we use binary search and halve the search space each time. It will take us 18 reads from the index to find the pointer to the block that contains the record, and then access the SSD one more time to fetch the block that contains the record into memory. So in total, we need 19 reads from the disk, which means it would take about 950 microseconds to complete the query. This is more than 5,000 times faster than without using an index. The disadvantage of using an index is that we need to use extra space, but we will also need to maintain the index on writes. So writes become slower. For example, if we add a record to the database, we would need to add that record to the index as well. So a database that designs for fast writes would probably not want to use an index. The query might also be searching for a record for which there is no index for. If we search for a record based on the name field instead of the member ID, then we might still need to do a full table scan to find the record. So using an index does not guarantee a faster read. It depends on how we index the data and how we query for it. You might also think that to avoid redundant data when using an index, why not keep the database sorted based on some column? And the sorted column becomes the index column. Since indexing on a single column means that only if the search is based on that column, the query will be faster, the data is indexed not only on one column, but multiple ones to increase the chances where the query can be more performant at the price of additional disk space. If we sort the database as our only indexing decision, we will be limited to only a single indexed column, meaning an improved performance for only a subset of data reads. With that said, database indexing is only one out of multiple design decisions for how to store data and how to optimize access based on the use case of the system. If you want a free 12-week lead code prep plan with a complete set of questions along with summaries of papers and tech blog articles for distributed systems and best practices, you can check out the link below.